Welcome to Podcast. In this episode, we're joined by the Apache, the, the current British champion, Anthony Ketchy. What's happening, Otto? You all good? All good, mate. Thanks very much for inviting us on. That was no good. No problem at all. No problem at all. Uh, you're, you're one of the Belfast finests. Um, what I want to know is, Otto, uh, how you get started actually boxing and amateur boxing? Um... Years thought we were going back here that was about 10. Um, used to take a boxing gloves out on till the, the streets. And um, Tyrone or Tally, Tyrone McKenna, me, Tyrone McKenna, and Kieran McKenna, and my wee brother used to beat the lumps out of each other, <laughs> right, out the front, right out the front door and have a laugh. And um, just for me, I, I loved it. I, I love fighting. See, yeah, if it wasn't yeah. boxing, I was always fighting on the street. So we just, I, I think, I think Tyrone might have joined before me, like two weeks. And then one day, I grew a wee a set of balls, mate. And we had to just walk, the, where, where I am, plunk, where my mask house is, plunk was just literally a stone throw. So I wrapped up one night in a, a pair of jeans and a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going. I went to the Spirit of God. I just went, and then from there, I met Patsy, Patsy McAllister, just took a shame to me. And I think it was the week later, we were, I was in getting my medicals, and two weeks later, I was at my first championships. That's so, amazing. That was brilliant, man. Brilliant. Like, for, like, you were an amazing boxer, like, at an underage level as well. Like, mm-hmm. how many under age teams did you have, like, from Adam straight through to, like, the all Irons? Um, I don't think. The first the first tournament I lost and was, I actually lost that guy called, and you would know him, uh, James, the future Fern. Fern, you two were, were like, rebels, weren't you? You remember? Uh, I, I absolutely detested him. But he's a good guy now. I have a chat, I've chat away, though. He's a good fella. But... I just, he beat me in the, the, what happened was I won, or no, I had got to the Ulster Navas final and broke my knuckle and um, I was gutted and whatever else. And so we entered the Ulsters, whatever, it was a couple, couple of months or two later or whatever. And um, I just thought I was unbeatable. I made them patty my cuddles. It was going to smoke up my heart, tell me I was amazing. And then I went in there and he schooled me, he boxed the head off me and, and I was just gunning him for me, and I was gunning for him every championship, you know. I, I actually remember the way I did that. I can't play. I talk about we were kids, like, uh-huh. um, at the way in, like, even there was talk about, I guess, so many kids, like 13 year olds, talk about UC Fates, or because both of us were, were class uh-huh. at that level, like, so I was know. Sweet, like, yeah, man, that was, I, I haven't even looking back now, I went away on a couple of trips with them, and I, you know, I just always wanted to fight him no matter what. <laughs> I don't know what. I just I just had a dislike for him, do you know what I mean? And, and he was cocky. And he back was cocky. He was mate. I don't know what, but he had the right to be cocky because he was little. He was little. And um I just nailed him a few times then after that. And and then kind of just went, right, you know. He got his own he's back. over a, a bit a few times now, you know. He started off as laying the other prophet and you moved to Holy Trinity as well. Was there any, you, you were by our clubs, just, just down to you, wasn't it? Down to you, aye. 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 Well, what it was, uh, Oliver Plunkett is always, you know, my heart is with Plunkett, do you know what I mean? It was more, you know, Patsy McAllister and Anto Taylor, I, I genuinely believe, like, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be boxing because, like, at that stage, I would have been, like, I was... Uh, like an apprentice plaster. Yeah. I was getting out of work and like, fuck that shit, you know, and that one over there club, I was exhausted, you know, and you getting in the bed to go to sleep, waiting on a half six. Sometimes I woke up with Patsy and Atto dragging me out of bed. <laughs> what are you doing? Went over to the gym with freaking plaster all over my hands, you know. Then so I mean, I owe I owe a lot to Patsy and Anto and all everyone have plunk up because yeah. They were all amazing and they're all good guys. Like, every time I talk to Patsy, <clears throat> and I give in like Patsy's and 
Tyrone and, and Tom McCormick's company, they're always talking about you, you can't say about the old the the good old days, like so it just goes to show like as well. But I know they were amazing. I, back in they, they were my favorite years, but you know, I have some memories, you know. Uh, you know, you know Eamon Finnegan. Eamon Finnegan was the modest man that I knew. He still is. I see no he, he's quite down now, thankfully. I uh, he's, he's quite he's oh, already dead and all there. I think that's raised him up a bit. But <laughs> Well, I got some memory to him, and he was a mad man. And we ended up boxing as well, too. Whenever, whenever I joined, you boxed in the Ulster Seniors. Did you actually box Tom McCann as well? I boxed her own and, and, and David. Yeah, what, what was that like, like fighting like, two mates? Was it weird? Um, I see it at that age, like, because you weren't any like, kids, you were like seniors. Uh, well, me and Tyrone, see, when, when we weighed in and we knew we were going to be fighting each other. I, I drove him up to KFC and we sat and had a KFC together, like, you know what I mean? And it's not like Trump, because if you're fighting Trump, Trump's going to mad with people who would hit you. I know, I know. Nuts. No, it was, but back then, like, I basically grew up with him, like, from a young age. Him and his brother, Karen, like, do you know what I mean? And you couldn't have got a word out of Tyrone when he was younger. He was just so quiet, do you know what I mean? But see, when he went... He, when he went boxing and he started the acting, he just started coming out of himself and then look at him now. Maybe he's a superstar. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he's a young superstar. Here, okay. We'll talk about, obviously, more about those who's here out there. No. And I want to get this in because I want, I want this fellow that, that listen to this. You beat Dave McComb. Dave McComb. <laughs> I'll actually, I'll actually, I'll tell you every story about that. Me and Dave, we were, we were training up in Trinity, both together. And um, the, I remember the and me, I was always trying to get a wee scope. What's he at? Or like just to see, you know, what yeah. he was going to bring to the table. And he, he never wanted to spar with me or, or wanted me around in the session. Like, do you know what I mean? But um, I always, I always really rated the, he, I always, I thought he was, he was unbelievable. He was just at length and distance and everything was class. I thought me and D would have, fought each other in the final of that championship. We roomed together and everything, you know, there, there, but it was just weird. But mm-hmm. he's an absolute legend. I have a lot of time for him. I've got a lot of time for all of the films. Yeah, like, <coughs> D, like, I remember years ago, like, D was, actually, he seemed mainly, but he were in boxing terms. Uh, and he was just unbelievable, fair. Like, you know, he'd say a big nighty fella, his distance is perfect. Yeah. You couldn't get near him. That's a bit, yeah. a bit of thing. He was, um, he, was something like, he was something like Sean McComb. Obviously, Sean McComb is... Sean's more skilled than I am, relaxed. Yeah. So it's different kind of stay, you know? Yeah, but I think, I think that that's all to do with the IAB. During the Irish team and all, and he had that the perfection. Whereas back then, you, you never really got them. As, well, you never got, I mean, that opportunity then. Yeah. At, at his age. But I remember watching D fight, and I think it was Baker. Paul Baker in the final. It was Rob, wasn't it? Yeah. I remember thinking... He's just disgusting, like you know what I mean. I'm thinking, gee, he is lethal. And I was only, I was last fight, actually. Was that his last fit? I may have been actually, I may have been, I'm not too sure. No, I don't think it was. I don't think no. it was. No, I don't think so. <laughs> don't quote me on it, like, yeah. yeah. But after you beat Dean, sorry, it wasn't all shit, it was Aries. Aries, you beat him. And then the three after that, there you beat Stephen Ormond, who was. He wasn't current, but he was an ex Irish senior champion. Yeah, he so was young, Mick. Yeah, I was only 17. I remember him shaking myself, man. Like, I think he was like five times senior champion, but he'd yeah. like, he like took on a wee break and whatever else. And I remember thinking, I'm a dead man here. Oh, <laughs> what the hell? How was he to say, two wee stocking him? Yeah, yeah. Mate, yeah, and looking at him, like, you'd think he'd like a wee bull. I, but I handled Stephen very well. I, I think I actually beat him 12 2, 12 1, something. Uh, yeah. A big enough score, like, you know. But in the final, you took against Ross Hickey. Hickey. I Ross Hickey's a cracking boxer. Like, I think you fought him twice, two very, very close fights. But what do you make of, of Ross Hickey? Because before you, 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 you tell you, because Ross Hickey, he won a European bronze medal at senior level. And he had the potential of a lot more potential Olympian, but obviously he was prone to injuries. Yeah. Well, I think he, didn't he win that? He, didn't he win the bronze in Liverpool? Yeah. Obviously, I, was actually, I was actually there. I was actually there and seen it and thinking, like, Jesus, that could have been me, you know. But still, with that that defeat, 
destroyed me at more more at an, at an amateur as, the, as in the amateurs like i mean once well he beat me the second time but the first time i remember thinking two weeks prior to, or a couple of weeks prior to that i can't i don't know how long maybe a month or so i sparred him and punched the head of him i thought i'd I, I beat the life out of him you know yeah. and, and it was all in the irish team and i'm thinking to myself like going into the fight Jesus, what, what way am I going to celebrate here? Or what am I going to, <laughs> am I going to say to the RTE camera? <laughs> and um, he got in and clipped the ears right off me. But in fairness, it was about like a, a point, was it? It was two two points he got. I think was it? Ah, uh, uh, it's not six four, six four, four eight nearly. Ah, uh, I'm just feeling a bit off your boxing. There's no ranking. Don't know what it is. That's good, man. The next time, the next time I fought him, he beat me convincingly because I was just, I got into my head, I have to charge at him and I'm going to break him down or whatever. I actually, you know what says at, at ringers down in the stadium, I've come, fell clean out of me. I'm embarrassed at the moment, I'm embarrassed at everything. But um, yeah, Ross, Ross is ridiculously talented and um, I remember he, yeah amazing mate and he got on he got on a big grant then and all and I remember thinking he's loaded and I look what I could what you, the year? you know what I mean so like, in 2000, 2008 you made a goal of like trying to get the Libby qualifier you beat Eric Donovan no he was number one at the time and you lost the five ride close um fight to him and then sorry you beat him sorry you beat Eric Donovan um I mean, again, losing that game. Mm. But even, even though you lost that game in the final, like, to beat someone like Donovan, who was like one of the best in Ireland, mm. uh, and a big name in the high performance at the time, did that give you confidence going forward? Massive confidence. I, I actually thought when I beat when I beat Donovan, I'm going to get Hickey here, like, you know. Uh, but yeah, Donovan was, I remember watching him training and all, and I, and I always looked up to Eric, like, you know what I mean? He was always, he was always top dog down there, yeah, and, he was. and talk, and he was, he was just a good lad too as well, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I beat him, it was 12-9, I still remember the score, um, and I thought, right, I'm going to go in here and beat Hickey here, and I'm going to get a wee chance at 17, you know, maybe to qualify for the Olympics. And um, yeah, mm-hmm. that was it. Got I, I got it. I got a proper beating that day. <laughs> <laughs> Fell out of the ring, embarrassed myself, and I think I think I don't even know if I fought after that for about two or three years. Like I think if I'm correct, like, you might know me. You might know what I, I don't, I don't, I'm not too sure myself, but you beat Steve Donnelly in the also senior final. Now I imagine this victory because I think you're the only person to beat him. In those seniors, because yeah. I think he's the only yeah three new all seniors champion. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, he actually tweeted it the other day. I didn't know it, but he tweeted it the other day. I was the only man to stop his run, and um, with me, I, I remember Stephen. All of a sudden, Stephen was very late, and then he was right up the weight slick. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Well, where the fuck did he come from? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I go to myself. This wee guy's a whippet. Do you know? Fast as anything, unbelievable talent. And I went, the first round, I went to myself, you know, I may win this, I, I get the first round in and run like fuck. So that's what I've done. I went out and I had a few heavy shots and tried to get, and I think I got maybe, it was a good, it was a good po- couple of points in front. And I, yeah. he, he chased me and beat me down for the next two rounds. And you know the way the amateur score, the scoring was and whatever. Like, yeah. but, <coughs> just crazy. And I just scraped it and I was delighted. Like, obviously, it was all like 2008 era and all there and 2009. But like, you, you didn't put, turn pro until 2012, right? No, I, I was. What happened then? Like, does, does that like have any sights set on like the come up against Delhi or anything like that? Um, I think I went to, right before the Commonwealth Games, I went to their fur games. And fur games, Australia. yeah, in Australia. Yeah, and um, that was my last one. I just, I wasn't really taking boxing serious and all. And I was just really, I thought I had a good wee career till then, and I, I was starting to really ruin it and become a bit of an idiot. And um, so it just, Mark O'Hara actually went, in my place 
I should have. I didn't even enter the Ulster Seniors that year to qualify for the Commonwealth Games, just through being a kid and wanting to go out in the streets and yeah. have a carry out and hang around your mates and you know what age, you know what I mean? Yeah, so definitely. That's what that's what made me real not get to the Commonwealth Games or not even try and get to the Commonwealth Games. So what what uh, what, what made you decide to turn professional? Well, I was working on Subway. I was actually working with Raymond Gidley. He was working at the same Subway. There's madness, mate. We're all, we all live so close together. Yeah. And um, Andy and Finnegan. I was going to say, can I write anything about our team? <laughs> so um, I was working there. I just had my first week there. So I was skint, mate. I hadn't, I, hadn't, uh, I hadn't a pound. I was living off. Uh, I was working 44, 45 hours a week. And it was madness, madness. And I was making no money. And I just thought, I hope boxing always came kind of natural to me. Like even sometimes that I would have been out of the game for for months and whatever else, I used to just get straight back in and boom, yeah, and again. And um, so I just went, listen, I'm going to give this a wee crack. Sean McCulloch and his dad, Paul McCulloch, who I owe a lot to as well. The late Paul McCulloch, he's an yeah. absolute legend. But um, they come down to the shop, subway shop, and asked me to come up to the gym. So about, how do we think about it? And I was speaking to her about it and whatever else. And I went, I want to go up and see what the story is. I had Willie, Big Bang Casey up there. And they had Levan, the wolf. At the yes, time. that's right, George and Fitter. Yes, yes, mate, he was a beast. So I walked in first time and they asked me what I spar. I says, I'm no worries, no worries. Um, so I thought maybe spawn some of my own weight. And they stuck me in with Levan. And I, but all I, I, out of pure fear, mate, all I uh, run around the ring and get the head off them, you know what I mean? And from there, they loved it. They loved it. Everything, you know what I mean? And um, from there, everything just kind of unfolded. Like, when you turn pro yourself, like, did you have any ambitions to be like, or sorry, did you have ambitions to be more than from from the offset? No. 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 What, what was your ambitions? To be a British champion. Serious? And that's all. Like, I mean, I, I wanted to win an Irish, an Irish title and a British title. That's all I wanted to do. And that's taken me fucking 10 years to get there. Like, you know what I mean? But get... That's through no fault, you know, just through your opportunity, obviously. Yeah, I had a lot of shit going on through my career. And I also i am I'm to blame for a lot of it too. Um, but most of it I'm not. Yeah. Um but I just I was just always wanted to win that British title because I won the Four Nations three times and I, and I won the Irish titles and all them wee ones and I would I just really kind of wanted to do what I've done amateur in the yeah, pool I it. Uh, so I mean British title was my aim and now I'm, I'm there but I'm 32 and I, I'm no spring chicken I think I kind of need to start getting moved in here don't I, you know? well, well thankfully you are moving in the right direction like, and just, well, just you know, starting you but it's, you, you turned over with, with the McCulloughs. Yeah, obviously, Ray, Ray Gilling, I'll train you too for like the Martin Ward fitness, but was there anybody else you, you train with as, as a pro? I've been through a few. I've been through a few now. I, I mean, I went with, I started with Paul McCulloch and Sean McCulloch. Um, then the team that I was with, Emerald Promotions, yeah. they wanted to make a move to America, uh, Philadelphia. I was never keen on the idea because I was a homebird yeah. and I, I didn't really want to leave and whatever else. But I just bought a caravan, I remember it. I just bought a caravan, it cost me five grand and I was broke. And I went, they were asking me, will you go, will you go over to the States? And I was like, Jesus, no, I'm just took out a loan and to pay for a caravan or whatever else. And they, your man says to me at the time, Mark Ablett, he says to me, Listen, if I pay for your caravan, will you go and see how it is for a couple of months? So I says, I, I don't sweat. And he says, how much is it? <laughs> he says, how much is it? And I says, I'm, I'm raising. I slipped up her. Like, I should have said 10 grand. Like, I'm going to say, five grand. <laughs> and he, he put the money in my bank the very next day. And I went and tried it out. But it all went shit, you know. Have you uh, ever <clears throat> on the team, thing? Eh? Was it before London? It makes me offered that Anvil Barassi looking for me to go over as well. 
as right. well as Campbell Harvey. Yeah, yeah, I remember well. Uh, they were they they were trying to sew everything up at the time. I remember they were they were trying they were paying people a wage and yeah. they were looking after them basically. Like, but what it was as you you know yourself, like if you don't have no pull in the pro game, you're going to work. Definitely. And, and that's kind of what happened there. And I spent I spent maybe <coughs> six months on and off out there, a bit longer actually, and. I started to lose my mind, like, you know, I was missing my wee baby, I was missing my missus and all, and I thought it was taking a bad lick, you yeah. know, and, and there was nothing happening, I had no fights, um, I flew, when I actually got a fight eventually, uh, it was just outside of New York, I forget the exact place, but, um, so I went up to the place, they, they, I had my and the missus booked for Amsterdam for, for a, you know, for a wee trip. So we had to cancel it because I thought I'd have been home. Yeah. So we had to cancel it and they paid her to come out to watch my fight. So, which was nice of them. Uh, well, they did. And so she came out and anyway, I turned up to the venue, uh, up, well, the hotel. Yes, your opponents arrived and all, no problem. Happy days. There's my first fight in the States, love and life. Um, I woke up the next day, it turned out your man had said that his room was too cold. He's a professional athlete. And if I didn't turn the heat on, he was going home. So he got in his car and drove home. No way. <laughs> got to admit, absolutely right. great. So I was going home, down, no money, you know, just lost a, a trip. With my missus to Amsterdam. Yeah. So, all right, she was in she was in New York, but it just wasn't the same, you know. Yeah, right? so you were training over like about the holiday to you. Uh, uh, I was that just used to. It. But like as a pro, you know, you're 18 and one, you've only lost once. Yeah. Um controversially, I must say as well, the Martin Ward. I see my mouth was the fake and the Danny saying I was. Um what, what do you think it was fake? Because am I right in saying did you switch stats? I'll, I'll tell you all about it. Um, well, what it was, that was actually one of the lowest points of my life, losing the Martin Moore. I took it really bad. Um, so, leading up to it, I was working with Raymond Ginley and D. Walsh, and they were pushing me every day. They were, they were doing exactly as they should have been doing. Yeah. Um, I got it into my head. That he he fought Ronnie Clark a few months before that. Did you sign Ronnie Clark? I so I thought that Martin Ward struggled with it with a southpaw, and um, I'm not even a southpaw, and so I decided to adapt and and box southpaw and done it throughout camp and whatever else and all down to myself and my my own tactics. Yeah, I went into that fight and boxed southpaw for twelve rounds like an absolute wanker and. Um, even though if it were anywhere else, I think I had near enough one every round. He didn't lay a glove on me. I never had a scratch on my face, and yet he was busted to pieces. But I never done enough. As I say, you've got to take it away from the champion, which should not be true. Like it shouldn't be that way. Like, like but, well, see, for me, was it? I asked I asked him, I wasn't that man. I think frustrated me. What's what he doing? What's that? Do. He's, he's far better. Do. Like a little bit. I like I mean, 99 times out of a hundred. I beat Martin Ward. Like, he's not special. I, I should knock him stone dead. Like, you know, I, I'm confident. Get me in with that fella again. Yeah. And I'll be over uh, before six rounds. But, I mean, uh, at that time, my wee sister, who I was very close to, um, had lost a baby. And, and there's no excuses here, but it yeah. was just... Well, that's not playing your mind, like, no matter what we just had. It was yeah. not playing your mind, like. Yeah, so... Like I was all about doing it for him and the the wrong attitude and whatever else and and I just I just the way I was man I just fucked up and but then like, your next few fights um you get back you get back on track a few wins and all and then yeah over and took the uh British title of the champion Sam Bowen mm-hmm. um a hard hard confident we we get into that fight. Not after losing the Martin Ward in England, I can over the fight bone. Like, was her were you fully confident? No, no, I wasn't fully confident. No, I'd be lying if I said I was. Um I kind of like adapted in my head. I said to myself, it's either I'm going to sleep or he is, you know? Like 
either I'm getting stretched out or he is. So yeah. it would have taken him to really nail me badly that night, you know, proper for to be getting me out of there. Yeah. yeah. After a few rounds, I just kind of like thought to myself, well, this isn't too bad. I had to have won the first two or three. So I'll just stick to my boxing from here. And, yeah. you know, I've done the business and I've, I've made the best feeling I've ever felt in my whole life. I, I suppose, you know, it was the best feeling because that's who you started to, to win. That was your ambition to win the prize title and bang. Exactly. So, like, I've done exactly what I wanted to do. And now I, I just feel privileged to be in this position. Like, I've never been one for really shouting names or talking shit. Like, and mainly because it's just not, it's just not me, mate. Like, I'm even coming on the podcast tonight. Like, you know, man, I'm, I'm sweating all day. Jeez, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? The <laughs> nerves hanging out of me. But I mean, that's just me as a person. And um, I've learned to deal with it. Yeah. Well, I suppose, like, stuff like this here, it's, it's good. It might be, might be in your comfort zone, but obviously, obviously on yourself, it's good to do it because it gets your name out there and it gets people talking about you, especially for your next fight, which is next week, top of the bill, uh, to find your tail against Leon Woodstock. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sure that's another great, like, great kick in your career because you're top of the bill, defending the title. How, how do you feel about that? Yeah, absolutely lethal. Um, obviously, I'm gutted for Carl. I was out. I spent a week out in Manchester with him, and he was yes, looking. Far. Yeah, man, he was looking. He was looking top form. I really thought he was going to produce, and I just still, obviously, I still do. Like he will beat Jamel Heron, and he yeah. will this title home. But I was also looking forward to being on his bill, and you know, I thought maybe it would have got me a bit more attention because now I'm kind of thinking, like, people are going to think like. Who the hell is Sambo Pikachu? You know. Listen, you think because know, you think you beat Sam Bowen. Sam Bowen was like a name of a, a boxing circles here. They, all the eyes are, are, are gonna be on you, but why are you hanging around? So like there's gonna be no crowd, but no one's doing that nuts anyway. They're all gonna watch watch me. There's gonna be a bit big audience of boxing like. Well, that's it, man. I mean, I'm delighted to be top of the ball. I, I've n- I never genuinely never thought that it would be there. But I am, and I'm well up for this fight. I mean, I'm coming down the way now. I'm looking like I've been on the crack for about two years. How are you coming along? Oh, good, mate. Oh, good. It's weight, weight's perfect. I'm, what, I'm about three kilo over the usual. Um, I'm just getting every, everything's coming to, you know, I'm getting that anger spot now, mate, you know, where I'm really chomping at the bit and I just yeah. want to get this done and, and, and get this win and move on. Because you're saying you're on track. <laughs> Take you over, ten minutes out. I've been taking over night before the way in. <laughs> well, listen, that's it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is like I've been using fresh as a daisy, and I, I, I can't like speak any higher of her. Like she's see her grub. It's amazing. It's, it tastes amazing, and it's just I, I, I'm eating lots, but my I'm training hard, but my yeah. weight's perfect. It's like don't get me wrong. Before I fought Ronnie Clark. I wait. I, I came down and, and Carl Fronten and Josh Taylor, they'll they'll testify. Like I came down from nearly 72 kilo in three weeks to 58.9. Tell tell us Francis and Daisy say is she with Belfast based at uh, Daphne Harbour, like? Yeah, yeah, she's she's from down the road, she's from down the Falls Road. She's she's unbelievable, man. Like just I don't know what her food tastes amazing. I enjoy it. Like today I had a steak from a lunch and I had salmon there like not too long ago and I just made it amazing. I can't speak any higher of her. Yeah, She's her pair. Hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. Tell me this, like what would you say would have been like the highest moment of your career? Um it would have to be the British title. Yeah. There's been a few there's been no it is it is it, it's the British title like I I was scunder for myself, even even the reaction, but man, that was just pure joy and relief. And I promised I promised my wee sisters, wee boy, you know, talk him every night and whatever else. And it may sound weird and whatever else, but I promised him that I would get it. 
and I got it, and I've never a weight off my shoulders. Now. Yeah, and just felt great, felt amazing. I mean, pure, pure relief, pure excitement. It was, it was amazing. Unreal. No, I, I, I'm sure I you. Have to, what would be your has with three, three times at the Olympics and? And here for me, like not, not from the Olympics. For me, it was always like your first European gold because you know yourself in European tournaments. Especially in Russia, like people from Ireland have no chance. So for me, yeah. the, the, the door, it, was, it was definitely for me yeah. the, the best. Later, later. But then, what would you say then would be your lowest point? My lowest point? Well, probably the way I took the war fight. Like, I just, I don't know, I just fell a bit softer. Like, I really, like, I near ruined my life, you know what I mean? Like I've near, I just kind of like disconnected from everyone. Um, started to hate the world over stupid stuff and whatever else. And well, I just well, that was a low part, one low part, and then another part was when I was held back and couldn't box from the McGuigans. But how long was that? Like, like, like you weren't able to box a year nearly. Yeah, a, a, a year of your career is, is a lot of long time, like. Yeah, well, I mean, I think so. That was it. There's been a couple, it's happened a couple of instances, like, you know. So I think so. What is it now? 2021, I think I've had three fights since 2016 or something, or something, something crazy like that, you know. So yeah. I've done all right. It, I'm it, happy it, now, it, and I'm, I'm not doing this. People, people in Irish boxing should, you know, I don't want to be a big head, but this should really look up to you because. Like of how you're, you were able to show resilience, like like you think with the setbacks in your career and the defeat of France Ward and how you come back, won a prize title, now you're top the bill. You know what I mean? So yeah. people should be looking, looking up to something out there. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Um, I started to get you know, I know people do. You know what I mean? And and the followers are coming now. I put out a week week there. You actually replied on there, the, the Tommy Fury. I got about seven hundred. 700 followers on Twitter. Love it. Of course, I hear. I hear. You'll get even more. As the fight goes on, people will be talking about you. You'll be on doing media days at BT Sport and all. Yeah. Well, all, all being well, you know. Swirl it's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. Don't worry about it. Yeah, goodbye, guys. <laughs> well, you. tell me this. When this fight, Liam, he's not great. He's not, he's not your level. Let's be honest, right? You're not going to swim. Well, I'm not going to say you're going to swim. It's my fight to lose. Your fight to lose. That's, that's the way you're throwing it about, right? Have you been promised anything offered? European ways, world ways? Nothing. Nothing? No, I signed a three-fight deal for the British title. Like, if I wanted the, you know, that X amount, X amount, X amount. Um, but... I'm 32, man. I mean, I, I really would like to get in with someone who is expected to beat me and yeah. ask myself and like yourself, like, I mean, you, you, the way you, with your, you went with your career was, if you're asking me, was, was perfect. All right. Albeit it didn't really work out this totally a hundred percent, but yeah. look, look, just look behind you and the belts and everything you have there and the opportunities that you were given. I would maybe just like one of them and to see how far mm-hmm. and that's it. 100%. Definitely, you know, especially you say you're 32. I was a 29 I turned pro. Like, like I had no, never ambition, no ambitions to become professional. For me, it was all about Olympics. So, yeah. when MGM at the time, Nancy K approached me, said, fast track me. I don't care if I lose. Mm-hmm. As long as lose the best. And yeah. I lost to nearly the best all the time. But, um, that's no regret yeah. whatsoever. Of course, you don't. I, I, like, I mean, there's you, what, what I don't know, what many faces you have. Nine. Nine fights. That's right. Nine nine fights. Fights. <laughs> I've had a couple of them. And um, like there's me, I have 19, and, and, I, and I didn't know where near I've achieved what you have in your short career. So I would have loved to do it. Uh, 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 I would have loved to have been able to do it that way, but I wasn't yeah. as good as you as an amateur. You, you, you don't know the business. Oh, the amateur. Very happy, guys. Like the feeling for the fighters on me out there, and that makes also pretty happy being able to. So, yeah. But you're saying, you know, 
you said earlier on about you know your personality about like not calling people out and all. Uh-huh. I I'm sure you'll be keeping an eye because they're fighting next week. But I'm sure you'll be, you'll be keeping an eye on the Valdez Brooks fight. Yeah, so that's hope a potential crack at the winner yourself. Listen, of course I'm expecting to lose against them, but let's make it what? That's it. Oh, like you know, of course, like I mean, whoever, whoever there is. After this, all being well, you know, I get the win. Get me whoever the hell they want. The biggest name they can. Well, beat Woodstock. That's defend your British title twice. You know, sometimes British titles regard a bit higher in some cases than the European title. So yeah. that's in the meantime. And I'm helping you here, right? In the meantime, let's start calling out Tavon Farmer. He's a yeah. name. Yeah. 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 champion. Yeah, beat him in the US, beat him get racked in America. Yeah, well, let's go, Tavon. Be a great fight in America, especially in New York. He's in Philly, but you think of all the Irish and all the Italians supporting him. Be lethal, be lethal, but unbelievable. Hundred percent. I mean, you know, obviously, I don't want to jump past next week because you know I just don't want to. That's fine. We'll keep the cards. Yeah, <laughs> until next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll scuff myself and then I'm going to be melted next week. But I tell me, so for being messed My cast what would scuff. But uh, no, I mean, beat Leon would stop. And, and, and you hear it here first, it is me tell you this. It does not matter who. Yeah. Any one of them. Happy days. Happy days. Now we're going to do a, a quick fair round, okay? Okay. If you could choose a different sport, what would it be? Um, I'd say most people would say football because of the dough, but I would say money. Or not, or not the money. <laughs> I, I would say money, definitely. No, sport. But, no I would say, I would say uh, running. My dad, my dad used to run for Italy. Serious? And, yes, mate, yes. And he is really passionate, passionate about it. And... He used to be an amazing runner, and I'm a decent runner myself, so I would have liked to have a crack at that. I didn't know it, now. didn't know it, oh, no, no, no. He's, a, he's an uh, ex-athlete. So, so, so you've got there. some athletic genes in your family, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, all, my, all my brothers, my wee brother, even the older brother, they all play Gaelic and Hurling and, and everything, everything. Your wee brother's Antonio, wasn't it? But Daniele. Daniele, I keep feeling because I remember meeting before and I can do it. We've all Basically. fucked up names. All <laughs> fucked up names. I'm I'm Anthony, Luigi, Felice, Kikachi. There's Daniele, Patrick, and uh, all sorts of models. That's good to hear class, but yeah, class that, uh, names. I used to get bullied all my life for it, but sure. It's all right now, I'm older. Exactly. <laughs> well, I don't see you trying to bully you now, huh? <laughs> Who would you say would have been or is or would have been basically your greatest rival? The greatest rebel. I uh, haven't got one at the minute, so we'll, we'll probably go with James Fern. <laughs> I will say James Fern, or we could say okay. myself and my own head. So, being yeah, okay, yeah. Would, be, would be, you know, I've always been my own rebel, and you know, uh, that's just the way it is. But I haven't, but, you, really but it's, it's, it's evident the way your career has been that you're mentally strong, mentally tough because yeah. people in your situation could have easily give up. 100%. Oh, well, here, listen, I have gave up, but the thing is, man, is, is yeah, as you know yourself, this game is addictive. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard to walk away from. And... It's addictive, but I'll be right back. No, man, no. I, no, I, 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 I understand, you know. I mean, uh, that's it. I mean, it's just so addictive and the buzz and, and everything about it, but I've stuck, I've stuck by and I'm stuck in and I'm proud of myself. Yeah. Do you have any pre-fight superstitions? Uh, most, this isn't good for kids, like, so if there's any kids listening, like, yeah, I used to, I used to have a, a tin of coconut mark bar before I fought. Uh, terrible, terrible, terrible way. Of I don't have it. Kids. Don't ever do it. Don't ever do it. But every fight, I'd uh, slip the wee tin of coke in the changing rooms and maul the mark bar and went out there thinking, Let's go. And what does Francis Daisy think of this here? What? What does Francis Daisy think of this? 
No, lie. they're old. They're old. Okay, like, okay. They're, these are amateur days now. No, lie. Yeah, it's different. Completely different. Completely different. Do you have a favorite quote or a favorite saying that you stand by? Um, quitters never win, winners never quit. That would be one from back then where we Patsy McAllister and Patsy, we Patsy. Well, yeah. Two legends. Here, who would you say is your favorite sports person, past or present? Sports person? Yeah. Um, I'd say Cristiano Ronaldo. I think he's a legend. I really proper do. Proper athlete too. Yeah, proper athlete. Um, he's just very good, mate. You know, he's just everything he does. I, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with him. He's just very, very good. I've watched all the videos on him. He's a nice guy. He, he donates to charity, helps people out. I remember hearing like there was a child who needed an operation for a hundred thousand pound, and he, he's yeah, right. I see, yeah. I see much. It was ninety grand. He paid off him. And he sent that out just like that. And I just thought, like, it's a real life hero type of shit there. Like, you know what I mean? So, you know, I've got to admire that. Well, have you ever done an operation and it costs 90 quid? I'll pay it, like. <laughs> You're a gentleman. <laughs> thank you, dude. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, Otto, thanks very much for being part of the podcast. You're an amazing guest. And I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. And thank you for the, for the chance to get on. Uh, Feels good, man. It feels good to get my. It's actually my first ever podcast. There you go. I feel privy now. Uh, I'm your first. There you go, man. You know what I mean? So, listen, thank you very much and appreciate it. You're a gentleman. Thanks very much.